as you will see in this recorded demos, um, I use question tools. So when you do this multiple choice timed assessment, the system will pick out 10 questions for you and they come randomly out of a, a question pool. So each time you do it, it'll be a different set of questions. So my additional demos here serve as a way for you to see those additional questions <laughs> without wasting on a test. So, so let me do that. As, so I think this one, I'll have to do it as a kind of a speed run. So I only got five minutes. I do have a meeting at one o'clock that I have to hurry to. So I will start and because this is a kind of speed run, I'll just uh, work through it quickly without explaining a lot. Um, in my other recruited demo, I do more of an explanation. So let me start and try to finish it in less than five minutes. All right. Um, so, yeah, okay. Quantity of unit load, which is, uh, uh, which is on this side unit meter is one, the rest are imperial, uh, moving at 40. Stop in 12 meters, speed doubles. I happen to have v squared formula memorized and know that um, the stopping distance will quadruple. That's something I have memorized. Rexam is two seconds. Uh, okay, that requires calculation. I'll do it later. Um, I, that's my test taking advice. Skip calculation questions, come back to it at the end. Okay, this is position. Velocity will look like a positive, zero, and then negative. Positive, zero, and then negative, okay. And so by process of elimination, I think this is it. Um, the rest of them don't even have correct velocity curves. Um, yeah. And this, I think that matches. Okay, Karma's constant speed uh, might not be constant velocity if it's moving in a circle. Um, direction of velocity can change, yeah. Uniform circular motion. This is velocity curve. We are asking for position. So it should first start by going up and then here it'll reach top and then it'll go down. Okay, so start by going up. Okay, so I'm looking at one, three, four, and then it will should reach some top and then start going down. Okay, that's this one. Yeah, and I think the rest don't show that feature. Question seven. Odometer and speedometer. Odometer measures distance. Speedometer measures instantaneous speed. Uh, well, yeah, odometer, it doesn't measure displacement. There's a dis difference between displacement and distance travel. Um, it doesn't measure displacement. So distance travel, speedometer measures um, instantaneous speed. Um, average speed, like average over what time? Average over very short amount of time. That's what instantaneous speed is. Okay, acceleration of projectile in the horizontal. So if I, we say projectile, it means we are ignoring air resistance, that sort of stuff. So acceleration, the horizontal direction should be zero. O only acceleration is gravitational in the vertical direction, which is not an example of projectile motion. So which is uh, the, uh, so what it's asking for is in which of these cases do we have things other than gravity acting on the thing? So paper, play. oh, here, so yeah, the shape of the wings, air resistance actually matters, so it won't be projectile motion. Gymnast jumping off, it, um, gym, it, the gymnast is probably, um, the, the air resistance is not significant, so projectile. Uh, baseball, yeah, uh, projectile if it, as it's undergoing to motion. Uh, same thing with the football, uh, to, to some approximation. Like paper, paper airplane is one where you can more clearly say that air resistance player, uh, plays a clear role. Yeah, following statement about projectile motion, it's not true, okay, in general. A counter example, okay. Speed of projectile is smallest at the high. Um, that sounds true. I don't think I can think of any counter example. Uh, horizontal, yeah, that is true, okay. Kind of. Uh, there before the highest uh, time. To, uh, that. Uh, yeah, so here the counter example I'm thinking of is basically anytime it's not on level ground, like a uh, projectile is launched and it lands at a higher height, then, uh, then the time it spends, it's gonna be different. So counter example, so it's not generally true. Um, the time, the up to, yeah, that feels so true. Um, and counter example, I think there is technically some, but it's so convoluted that this uh, counter example for this is more common 
fanciful scenario. So, okay, so I have one question here, and I'm actually out of time. So let me just guess, uh, which is not all that bad. So reaction. So you've done uh, some of you did the reaction time um, exercise in lab. So you might have measured this as your reaction time. And you've gotten some sense of uh, how long it takes, uh, how what kind of distance is associated with that. So I think I can roll out 5, 11, and 45. Those are all too far um, because, they, um, um, uh, because uh, they are nothing like the typical numbers I get. So I'm going between 20 and 31. And if I had more time, I would work it out and I would get it right for sure. For here, I'm just gonna guess. It's a 50-50 chance guess. I'm gonna guess 20. Uh, it might be wrong. If it's wrong, oh well. <laughs> if it's right, I got lucky. That's really what it comes down to. Let's make sure I answered all 10 questions. I'm gonna submit it and then if I got nine out of 10, that's because I, uh, <laughs> okay, I got 10 out of 10, which means I guessed it correctly. So I got lucky. But the kind of the test taking strategy that's useful for you to learn is how to eliminate uh, choices that are obviously wrong. Um, so instead of having one in five chance, I had one in two chance of getting this right, and I happen to be lucky. So, all right, so that's uh, all the time we have. Uh, thank you so much to those of you who are here in real time. And sorry, uh, today I can't stay after the session to address individual questions. Uh, in most weeks I can, it's just the first Mondays I have one o'clock meeting. And, um, but to uh, send me a message and 